Father, we thank you, Lord, for this morning. We thank you for your word, as your word sows the seeds into our hearts, into our minds, into our thoughts. Father, I thank you, Lord, that your word changes us. Father, I pray, Lord, as we listen as you preach this morning, Father, I pray, Lord, that I'm just a servant and that you speak through me. Lord, I pray that you give me the words to say, give me the utterance to speak. That I may speak as the oracles of God, Lord, I pray for your unction. Lord, as I lean upon your Holy Spirit, without your Holy Spirit, Lord, I'm nothing without you that I can't do nothing. But this morning I ask for your help. Teach us this morning. Father, I pray, Lord, for the hearers. Father, I just pray that you challenge us to open our hearts, to open our eyes to see father that there are things that you want us to hear this morning lord that there are things in our life that you want us to change to be better so we thank you we love you and everything that we do we acknowledge you we say thank you in the mighty name of jesus and everybody say amen, amen and amen you say isaiah chapter 59 verse 19 we're going to read it all together. So we're going to read the English and we'll read in Psalm 1. Isaiah chapter 59 verse 19. If you can read up here, let's read it together. Ready? So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. That's you say it up with Lima Iba for Ipos Fulviva Ia. Oh, my sister, 
la tonte ma ta ta ou soa fo yo e pa ou mai fo i le mea e a ua e a i le na e ma ta ta ou la to i lo no ma ma le a o o mai e pe yo se vai ta fe le o i ta mai ona fa tu i na le o se ta na vai e te te e a tu i a te i a i le na ma o yo fa I really want to emphasize this part that the lower part here says when the enemy comes in like a flood the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against it. This morning I want to talk to you this morning about raising a standard. Say raising a standard. Raising. And I want to encourage you this morning to to stay awake. Amen. Nudge, nudge your neighbor say stay awake. You know, um, you know I, I want to encourage you to, to hear God because I believe that God is wanting, is wanting us to raise a standard in our lives. And I want to challenge you, and the reason why I want to challenge you to raise a standard in our lives is because we're living in times that are hard. Amen? Can you put your hands up if we're living in easy times? No, no, no. Being a Christian is not easy. Being a Christian is not easy. Walking for God is not easy. Can you put your hands up if you think it's easy? But I, God is encouraging us this morning to raise a standard because the enemy is coming. See, the Bible says, it says here that when the enemy comes in like a flood, now I want you to notice is that it does, the word of God doesn't say if the enemy comes. It says when the enemy comes. So we know that the enemy is coming. In fact, we know that the enemy is already here. And when he comes in like that, uh, I don't know, what, I, I'm not sure about you, but a flood is not a part of water. Or the flood is it's, it's very tough here. And when the flood comes, it's hard for you to stop it. But I want to encourage you this morning, when the enemy comes like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard. And that standard is the Word of God. Can you say the Word of God? <laughs> The best way that you can set your standards or the best way that you can see your progress in life or your walk with God is to measure up with the Word of God. Because that's the standard that we look, you know, a lot of times pastor always say, look in the mirror. Look in the mirror. And the Word of God is, so to speak, is looking in the mirror in your own personal life and asking yourself, Am I measuring or is my standards according to the Word of God? Amen. Because I want to challenge you. And you know, in life, a lot of times we think that when we have standards, we think our standards are good, right? But a lot of times your standards or my standards is not, a, is not good enough because God's standards is not the same standards as men. Amen. Your standards is not the same as God's standards. God's standards is up here. And I want to encourage you this morning to raise your standards to according to God's word. I'm not here to point the finger, but I'm here to encourage you to look at your own self. Amen? I love it. Because if you're thinking about whether the person next to you is listening to the Word of God, then you've already missed the Word of God. Because God is encouraging you, God is encouraging me to raise a standard in your own personal life. Say, can you say raise a standard? Raise a standard. In Philippians chapter 3, in the Philippians, in Philippians chapter 3, Paul saying is, not that I have already attained or am I already perfected, but I press on. See, Paul here is encouraging the, the church of Philippi that I don't know everything. I don't have everything. I don't know everything and I don't have it yet. But he's encouraging the church that there are things that we're going to go through that is not going to be easy. In fact, Paul went through a lot of things. He was beaten so many times. He was, he was stoned. If you read the, the history of Paul, he was stoned, he was beaten many times, he was left for dead, he was in jail, he was hungry, he went from miles to miles. You know, if you want to go to Auckland, you go on a plane, you go on a car, right? If Paul needed to go to Auckland, he walks. That's how hard it was. But he's Paul is encouraging the church of Philippi that you're going to go through some tough times 
What he's saying is here, verse 13, it says, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. What it means is, is he, what he's saying is, I don't understand everything. I don't know everything. But one thing he does know, he's saying, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. You say, I'm all about moving forward. Amen. I want you to know this morning that God has standards. And our standards are not the same as God's standards. You remember the story of David and Goliath? Here's what happened. Who won? Who won? David or Goliath? David. See, when, when Goliath came to the, 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 the Israelites, no one was bold enough or everyone was scared to fight Goliath. Why? Because he was a beast, right? A beast. No one wanted to fight him. But here comes along a, a young youth, David, and he said, Man, I want to fight. I, I want to fight Goliath. I want to fight Goliath. But remember what Saul said. Saul said, Man, you're just an only a little young boy. You're not a soldier, you're not a warrior, you're not even in the army. You only came to give sandwiches for your brothers. Right? Read the story. He came to give sandwiches for his brother. But he said when he came there and he saw Goliath and he saw that no one wanted to fight Goliath. Because he, everyone was scared, right? Everyone was hiding behind Saul. And David said, now I want to take, I want to take this guy out. I want to take him on. But Saul said, no, you're not, you're not big enough. You're not old enough. Why? Because... Saul set the standards down here. But David's standards was up here. Well, his standards was according to God. We know the story what happened. David defeated Goliath. And I want to ask you a question this morning. It's good to challenge you. And, and, and my question to you this morning, which my point one is, who sets your standards? Who sets your standards? Who do you base your standard on? Who do you put your trust on? Who do you put your faith on? Who is the source of your strength? Who is the source of your finances? Is it your job? Is it your boss that sets the standards for you? Is it your husband? Is it your wife that sets the standards for you? As in your parents. Who sets your standards? Those married couples, who sets the standards of your marriage in your own relationship? As in Facebook? As in your favorite celebrity? Because I can tell you now, if you base your relationship based on your favorite celebrities, ooh, you're not going to last. Amen. <laughs> That's the truth. You're not going to last. You're not going to last. So my question to you this morning, who sets your standards? I want to encourage you this morning to set your standards according to the Word of God. We all know all blacks. Ah, that's a normal lady out there, all blacks. The all blacks is the best team in the world, right? If I talk to someone in South Africa, they'll probably disagree. If I talk to someone in England, they'll probably disagree. But I know the all blacks is the, is the number one team. And why is the all black is the best team? I said, oh, 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 number one in numerotasi and the other all blacks. Why is all blacks the best team in the world? High standards. Because they set high standards. High standards. High standards. And when, and no matter what new player comes into that environment, when they leave the all blacks environment, they go back to Super Rugby or NBC level or grassroots rugby, whatever you want, you know. That person becomes a better player. Why? Because the environment that they're in is set with high standards. And in the Oblix, they assess you by your attitude, right? They assess you by how you prepare. You know, sometimes, you know, I follow the Oblix through Facebook, and when they have a meeting, you know, they're, they're talking about their game plan, and you see them with their pen, now they eat up their pen. Well, what are they doing? They're preparing themselves. Writing down what, what this move and, and, and how can I attack and how can I defend this person? Why? Because the preparation time is not wasted. wasted time. But if you don't prepare yourself, 
If you don't prepare yourself and if you don't ready yourself for when the enemy comes, because the Bible says the enemy will come. In fact, he's here now. He's already here. A lot of broken relationships. Amen. It's sad now. A lot of broken families. A lot of people are dying through sickness. A lot of people are dying through suicide. It's really sad. Why? Because the enemy is coming in like a flood and, the, and God is encouraging us through the word is when the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. When the enemy comes, it's our job to lift up our standards. Amen? Amen. Don't be like all those Israel. I want to be all those Israel. It's all called Yaka. I don't think I think you are. But But when Goliath comes at you, raise a standard. David didn't hold back. Amen. Have a heart like David's like, come on. How big are you? Seven foot eight. Oof. Have a heart like David. No matter how big they are, if you have a heart that is strong, have a heart that is full of faith, have a heart that's not fearful, you can overcome things. You don't need to, you don't need to reach a certain age to do something good for God. Amen. You don't need to you don't need to wait till you're 21 or 31 or however to do something good for God. Kids, you can do something great for God right now. How old was Jesus when he was at the temple? Wow. Any 12 year olds here? You can do great things for God right now. You don't have to wait till you finish school to do great things God. Because this morning I want to challenge you. It's about raising a standard. Be in the environment of perfection. Be in the environment where God is um, challenging you to raise your standard. You know the 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 older old place. Because they're the best team. You know, we always hear if you want to be the best, you've got to fight the best. If you want to be the best team, you've got to play against the best team. Why? Because it's the environment that they sit and they raise high standards within the team. Now, listen, you know, you know how good All Blacks was? You know, Laurie Daly, he was one of the coaches for New South Wales rugby league team. All Blacks was so good that he brought his management team and spent the whole week with the old blacks. Why? Because he wanted to understand. He wanted to know what they go through and how they prepare. And I'm challenging you this morning. Set your standards. His standards are higher and we ought to work on raising our standards according to the word of God. Listen, it's no longer good to just for you to sit down on the sidelines and be spectators. Amen? It's no, no good. It's time for you to run your race. It's time for you to stop being a spectator and run the race that God has called you to run and don't let anyone else take your place. Say, raise your stand. Raise your stand. My point two is be prepared. So now's the time for you to prepare yourself. Amen. This is the time that we need to prepare ourselves. Prepare ourselves for what? Prepare ourselves for what? For when the enemy comes. When the enemy comes. Because you're going to go through some tribulation. You're going to go through some trials. There are some times that you're going to feel stressed. There are times that you're going to be smiling and you're all happy tomorrow. But no more. Because the enemy is coming and I want to challenge you. Be prepared. So when the enemy comes, like my mom said, I hate it. I hate it. Well, I, honestly, I love my mom, man. She's, 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 she's unique. But when the enemy comes, you stamp it. You stamp it in the name of Jesus. Say, raise a standard. Friends, we're living in tough times and uncertainty with a lot of things that's happening in the world, right? Amen. She's not in New Zealand, but worldwide with the COVID-19 and there's a lot of uncertainty. And the enemy is coming strong right now. 
in fact, he's not starting to. He's already starting to break families. He's already starting to break relationships. He's already stealing your happiness and your joy. And he's starting to steal the blessings that you have in your hands. People are losing a lot of jobs. Not a nice thing, right? Tell it to Why? Because of the enemy. A lot of people's dreams are shattered through the enemy. But I'm here this morning to tell you, friends, Amen. I got good news for you. Say, I got good news. I got good news. I'm here to tell you this morning that God is reminding you, reminding me that God is still alive. Amen. 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 God is still alive. He's still here for you. He never leave you nor forsake you. He's when you can count on him, you can trust on him, you can go to him when you when you need. In fact, the Jesus left. He when, when Jesus left, he said, "I'm going to leave a better help for the Holy Spirit." You know, the Holy Spirit is here for you 24 seven, 24 seven, seven days a week, 365 days a year. He's always here for you when you, when, when you're going through some hard times, when you need help, when you're going through a struggle that that you need some help with, whatever it is. He's here for you. You know, God is not like a, a service like, like Pat can say. You know, Pat can say opens what? 6 a.m. in the morning? Closes around about 9, 10 p.m. And within those hours, you're able to access the services and you can buy things outside those hours. If you knock on Pat can say door, you're going to be knocking all night. But with God, He's available to you 24-7. See, I'm raising a standard. I'm raising a standard. Raising a standard. Amen. Amen. You know, I, I, I'm a husband, I'm a father, and I'm also a leader in my family. And how I walk, and how I talk, and how I act, all my actions are fixed. My wife, and my family, and my kids. Am I perfect? Hell no. <laughs> Do I make mistakes? Yes. But I'm working hard to raise a standard in the Word of God. So my family, I base my family and I base my standards on the Word of God. It's about setting standards. Amen. But you know what's interesting to me? Is when you set standards for your life and when you set standards according to the Word of God and when you start living in the, in the standards, people are going to start saying things about you. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Oh, but I'm not saying, you know, it, it, it's, it's sad. To me, it's sad. When you start living according to the Word of God, people will start saying to you, oh, this is good. Oh, you think it's good for us now. People will say those kind of things. Why? Because you start living in standards. Can I encourage you this morning? Don't lower your standards to make someone else feel comfortable. Because they don't want to raise their own standards. Amen? I'm going to say that again. Don't lower your standards to make someone else feel comfortable because that person doesn't want to raise their standards. Can I get an amen? amen? Jesus came from heaven to earth. He came down to our level. Listen. Don't get me wrong. Listen to this. Jesus came from heaven to earth. He left his mighty throne to come to earth. So he left heaven to come down to our level. But listen to this. He lowered himself, but he didn't lower his standards. You can go down to someone else's level, but it doesn't mean that you have to lower your standards. You don't have to lower your standards so that you can fit in with the crowd. Amen? I'm telling you now, I, I I can go around my family, they can drink and they can do whatever it is. I can lower myself with them. But I don't need to touch some of the things that they do. Because I'm not going to lower my standards. Amen? It's about raising your standards according to the Word of God. Can you say, I'm raising my standards? Friends, it's not about being better than someone else. Amen? That's, 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 that's not the kind of business that we're in. It's about you setting a standard in your own life. 
the struggles that you've had to go through to get to where you're at today and living a life according to what God has called you in accordance with his word. In fact, without God's standards, without God's help, you won't be in the position that you're in today. You won't have the things that you have today. Challenge yourself to be better all the time. I always challenge myself to be better. You know, sometimes, um, like I said, have I made mistakes in my, in, in my marriage with Lucy? Yes, many mistakes. Have I said some things that she's been upset? Yes, I have. Have I made some wrong decisions with our, our personal family? Yes, I have. But I challenge myself to be better and to make better choices in our family. You know, right now, I, I don't know if you have personal goals, whatever that is. Maybe you're looking for a new job. Maybe you, you have physical goals. Maybe you have spiritual goals. But right now, I, 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 I want to share something, that I, a goal that I'm working on. I'm working on getting, hitting a particular goal with, with, with my physical. And I've been training quite a lot. And a lot of times, sometimes, you know, when I train, the next day I train, I always try and be better than the previous day. But what I've come to notice and what I've come to know is not every day is going to be a rock star training session. Some, you tell me, you know, sometimes when I go to training, I feel really tired. Sometimes I don't feel like doing things. But then sometimes I'm energetic and I feel like, man, I can feel like I can push a lot. But I've come to the realization that not every day is a rock star but it's about challenging yourself to be better every day. It's about myself and yourself being better every day. Say, I'm raising my standards. Number three. Yeah, sorry, can we go back to um, Philippians, please? We're almost done. My point three is, don't let distractions stop you from raising your standards. Don't allow society and the world to dictate your standards and bring it down to the level that is not pleasing to God. Sometimes we can be influenced by the things around us and put us in a box and not allow us to express who God has called us to be. We have higher standards in God. The Bible calls us a chosen generation. Say, I'm a chosen generation. Chosen generation. Distractions, amen. Distractions. You know, the... Paul, Paul knew that there was going to be distractions. Paul knew that the, the, the things that, he, that um, the, the, the journey that he was going to go through, it was not going to be easy. But he's encouraging, he's saying, but one thing I do, forgetting those things that are which are behind. Forget some of the things that you've done. Forget some of the, the, the bad mistakes. Forget some of the bad things that you've done. But encourage yourself to move forward. See, the Bible says here, in verse 14, it says, But I, Paul says, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. See, Paul knew if he kept going and going, there's a higher calling. There's a higher reward. See, raise your standards. Raise your standards. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8, verse 9, it says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. I want to encourage you, friends, to stay connected. Amen? Stay connected and prepare yourself because we're living in times, hard times right now. Amen? Now is the time for us to be prepared to found ourselves in the Word of God and to strengthen our faith. You know why? The Bible says that in later times, people will leave the faith. And if you don't strengthen yourself, you start to hear wrong doctrine, false doctrine, listen to a lot of wrong voices, but I want to encourage you to stay connected with the Word of God and help yourself to stay in the faith. Say, I'm raising a standing. I'm raising a standing. Let's be upstanding. I want to read this again. Verse 14, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the awful call of God in Christ Jesus. Friends, I encourage you this morning to keep going. It's not over yet. <coughs> 
But there's a big reward for us. Amen? There's a big reward waiting for us. But it's about staying the course and being able to raise your standard. Don't lower your standards, but raise yourself up to where the Word of God. Say, I'm raising my standards. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. Father, we thank you, Lord, as we raise our standards according to your word. Father, your word challenges us. Your word is there for us. Lord, there are things in our lives that we need to correct. There are things in our lives that we need to change in order to live according to your will. Father, I pray that you'll help us, strengthen us, be with us. And as we strengthen ourselves to raise our standards to be like your standards, Father. We thank you, Lord, that we can trust in you. We ask that you help us in these times. Lord, that we know that we are, we are going through times that are getting harder and tougher. Lord, we lean upon you to help us to go through these times. Bless everyone in this room. We thank you. We give you all the glory and all the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, everybody say Amen. 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 Pastor. You can be seated. I'm going to have a